What is the responsibility of those with power? Do they merely have an obligation to refrain from the misuse of that power? Well, we wish Marvel had refrained from misusing their power when they made this crap. Hello, and welcome back to Hate Watchers. Today we're doing our comedy breakdown and review of the first episode of She-Hulk, entitled, Whose Show Is This? We've got some more time on our hands, so we're gonna be doing these retrospective reviews of She-Hulk, Attorney at Law. Hey, shouldn't it be they, them, Hulk? Determining she was not very progressive there, Disney. Since this show has already come and gone, we're not gonna be doing real in-depth technical reviews of the show, but we're sure as shit going to rip on it and call out all the obvious bullshit. So let's get right into the breakdown. Spoilers ahead, like you even care. We open up on Jen Walters, badass attorney, practicing her closing argument for a trial. Her male coworker basically tells her she needs to whip her tits out during the closing argument, while her female coworker blows so much smoke up her ass you could butter her up and serve her for Thanksgiving. They shoo the man away, because these strong queens need to slay in a space safe from the bad vibes of constructive criticism and professional advice. Jen then Hulk smashes right through the fourth wall to tell us that she's a Hulk. We jump to a flashback where Jen is driving around with her cousin, who just so happens to be Bruce Banner, AKA the Hulk. Jen, being a competent and strong woman driver, swerves off the road and the car goes tumbling. She cuts her arm getting out of the wrecked vehicle and Bruce waits patiently for his heroine and savior to pull him from the car. Some of Bruce's blood drips into the gash on Jen's arm and she turns into a Hulk 3.4 seconds later. Uh, okay. Fingers crossed this show doesn't venture into the whole she didn't consent to being a superhero thing. Anyway, that's gotta be the lamest superhero origin story ever. Jen awakens in the middle of the woods and stumbles out in front of a sports bar that was four feet away. She runs into the ladies room to clean up where a bunch of queens come in and give her a quick non-consensual makeover they thought she needed. Which is kinda funny because even after a car wreck, Jen was still looking better than these four. Three men come out of the bar and see Jen and politely compliment her. Just kidding, Disney gives us an extremely realistic portrayal of men where the three of them immediately start lunging at her and following her. Naturally, she hulks out and Bruce stops her from murdering them, which would have been a totally rational decision. You know, the type of intelligent thinking a lawyer does. Jen wakes up yet again, but this time in Mexico, which is a nightmare of mine. At least it's this part of Mexico. Bruce explains what happened to Jen and she gets mad at him for not finishing his thought, even though she interrupted him. After Bruce explains everything, Jen only has one conclusion. Oh, because I'm better than you? Mm, it's just basically different. In a better way. In retaliation, Bruce rips a Hulk-sized fart and tells her to breathe it in. The cousins sit down for pancakes, where evil He-Hulk tells her she needs to leave her girl boss career behind and learn to control her Hulk side. Jen shares some wisdom on females. Triggers are anger and fear. Those are like the baseline of any woman just existing. All right then. Wow, sounds like the writers don't seem to think any woman has control over their emotions. Not very modern, Disney. Seeing where the show is headed, Bruce decides just to kill her and prevent this abomination from making it to Disney+. Plus. I am woman, hear me roar. No, no, no. Well, who would have guessed it? But She-Hulk is totally in control of her Hulk form and doesn't have to go through that annoying, awkward phase of being an uncontrollable monster like Bruce did for five movies. Because women are just that much more stronger, bruh. Bruh. Also, convenient that her clothes are still on, still fit, and nothing's torn, which is kind of a trademark look for the Hulk. She-Hulk and the Hulk start a training montage where she must learn to control when she transforms. Literally less than a minute later, she's as good as the Hulk or better than him at all things. Now that the world has achieved gender equality, the two get wasted. She lets Bruce know that she's gotta get back to her life and her career and her cats, but I'm just assuming that last one. Bruce says to calm down and oh no, now he's done it. You don't ever say calm down, dude. Jen then gets emotional while explaining how she's the best at controlling herself and not getting emotional. She delivers this powerful line that I'm sure had the female writers pouring tears into their white wine when they came up with it. So I'm an expert at controlling my anger because I do it infinitely more than you. Jen goes to leave, but remembering what happened the last time she drove, Bruce tries to stop her. She gets emotional again and runs over the only other person within 50 miles. The two fight and She-Hulk finds her superpower, complaining, and it cripples the Hulk. They wrestle a bit, then apparently just get over their disagreement and move on. Jen leaves and we return to her law office just in time for the closing arguments in her trial. 
where her male colleague would rather see her fail than for their side to win the case. Woo! Go Team Patriarchy. Just before she begins, some rando bitch from the WWE bursts in through the wall of the courtroom. Jen's friend tells her to do her thing and hulk out, but she doesn't want to because she likes this outfit and she thinks her shoes are really cute. Of course, I don't know why she has to do anything. As you can see here, these two cops are seemingly restraining this rando who just bursted through a wall, but whatever. This trash bag asks, Who the hell are you? Jennifer Walters, attorney at law. The show doesn't even attempt to explain who the fuck this WWE diva is and what she's doing here, but of course the two end up fighting. Disney clearly put a lot of thought and effort into this show, because literally the next frame has the two on the opposite sides of the room hurling a desk back and forth. Then the diva does a flying kick toward our boss lady hero, who punches her into a wall. And that's it. Those two moves are literally the entire fight. It's nine seconds start to finish. Jen then returns to her normal state as a mediocre lawyer and is ready to continue the trial. Because you know turning into the Hulk and fighting a supervillain doesn't drain you if you're a woman and the episode comes to a merciful end. Just kidding, there's a post credit scene where she objectifies a man and doesn't see the irony in this at all. Okay, now the episode is over. Wow. Well, we've reached that point in the video where we have to decide if this episode was a hate watch or, you know what, why waste time? It's a hate watch. It's the most hate watchy of all the hate watches thus far. This show looks like it would sweep the hate watchers awards if we had such a thing, and we're one episode in. Let's just hope this show is her insane, self-aggrandizing imagination and she's just in a coma after that car crash. It's better than thinking people actually got together to tell a Marvel story, and this was the best they came up with. I mean, I knew She-Hulk had all of these bullshit things, hokey woman empowerment lines, her being better than the Hulk at everything, making every male character a thoughtless pig on the verge of murdering any woman who dares to stand up to him, but I never would have imagined you'd get everything in the first episode. And the funny part is that the least Disney slash Marvel could have done is polish up the presentation of the show. The CGI and effects look like they're from the 90s, and even something as basic as the editing seems like a complete afterthought. If you're going to shove a turd down our throats, at least shine it up a bit. We're convinced that they started making this show, realized what a crap fest it was going to be, and just went and lit the rest of the budget on fire, knowing it would be a more productive use of the money. Maybe they thought, well, let's at least keep the show looking comically bad, and in a few years we can come out and claim it was a joke. Also, as is the case with almost every single female character in the modern age, it's nice that we can just skip that whole learning and training phase and skip right to the good stuff. Just like with Rey and Captain Marvel, She-Hulk comes right out of the box being the best at everything, a fantastic message to spread to all those young girls out there. Thank you for making it to this point in the video. Comment below, did you even bother watching this show? Do you think we'll get through all nine episodes without putting a bullet in our heads? Like the video if you liked it, and hit that subscribe button to catch our reviews on the rest of the first season of She-Hulk, as well as other current shows and movies. Thank you again, and we'll catch you on the next one.